Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. It is Rare Whiskey Friday, Daniel. No, I I tried it last week. It's your turn. No, I did it last week. No. I did it last week. I did it last week. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. I totally did it last week. I totally just, yeah. You, 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 you want to you learn it? I'm going to teach it to you. No, no. There's a few different, there's, there's gear shifts wait, in wait. this. What do I get if I perfectly recite it at any point? At any point? Yeah. I... Next wait. time. The next time. Wait, no, no. You have to, you're going to prepare? You're just going to spend all week not being productive, just <laughs> memorizing this. Not being this. productive. Just memorizing Just this. sitting in my house, <laughs> staring at a piece of paper. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. There'll be like a teleprompter yeah. up here. As you go. <laughs> I've got two voice coaches. All right, Rare Whiskey <laughs> Friday, we're going to go through and get first impressions on, on several different whiskeys here. These aren't necessarily large brands, more often than not. These are your smaller craft distilleries without a lot of distribution. You should be so lucky as to get your hands on a lot of these whiskeys, and uh, you're welcome for the review. Thank you to the Magnificent Bastards that sent the whiskey. So... This is Crater Lake. We've reviewed Crater Lake before. I've heard of this. The original one was sent in by Walker Bailey. Yes. This one is Magnificent Bastard William Shepard. William Shepard, you magnificent bastard. The original one we reviewed was just a rye, and we did it in a trio tasting with a couple of the whiskeys, one from Florida, one from somewhere else. Yeah. This one is their rye reserve, three-year-old rye whiskey. Rye whiskey. This three is old. from? From Crater Lake. What's from B Basically, it's Bend, Oregon. Okay. Right, so it's they're outside of Bend now, like 15 yeah. minutes, but it's basically Bend, Oregon. Oh. Now, I described the original one as a mixture of a chlorinated pool and that early funk. And so I was interested to see, by the way, this is batch 16. You know what this is to me? Hmm. This is rye spice and Canadian caramel. Yeah. I'm totally getting all the more classic rye notes out of this one versus the one that we tried before. This is way more herbal spicy. Yeah. And then the caramel note, specifically it's a Canadian caramel note, behind that rye, rye character. Yeah, it's almost vanilla caramel, like vanilla cream caramel combo. Yeah. It's going to lean more in the presentation of that rye than it is going to be the caramel. It, it, it's not going to be... If you like Canadian whiskey, you're going to love this. It's like, no, nah, there's too many steps mm -hmm. removed from that Canadian vibe for that to be the case. Oh, that's a nice, spicy, rounded... Ooh. Ooh. And then I get the vanilla on the Kind of, yeah, sweet vanilla rye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is, I do not remember liking the other one this much. I, so I almost want to compare, but we've got other whiskeys to go through, and this is first. No, what's today. really what's really nice about this is the herbal rice spiciness and the vanilla. These mm -hmm. are very very different flavors. These are contrasting flavors, but in, combined together in this bottle, they're it's a beautiful combination. I love that that flavor set. That herbal rice spicy note with it's, that vanilla. It's not in the other one. It's not? The other one's way drier and way more almost you know, chemical. You know what I got on the nose? Mm. Daniel's nose air. Half nose air? You breathed out in the glass. You did. You fogged it up. You fogged it up. I didn't give it a moment to unfog. I went in there. It's like it's Daniel's nose air. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's nose there. Just breathe Smell in my it. face. Go ahead. <sighs> <laughs> you did it. You can both. You asked. I needed to. Like, here's where I went wildly wrong. Yeah. If I had gotten like eight inches closer, yeah. he wouldn't have done it. Yeah. I would have backed off. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I project even with <laughs> nose air. <laughs> This is a significantly superior whiskey. It far is. more subtle, far more nuanced, far and, more balanced. And it, yeah, it's a balance with that beautiful sweetness from the vanilla. And the I'm going to go on record as saying this shouldn't be their reserve. This should be their rye. Mm. Like if this was your entry rye, mm. then you're making damn good entry rye. That's nice. Right? I like that. Okay. Okay. Hold that glass. Move it aside. We're switching. I'm going to do another rye, and then we're going to switch to bourbon, even though I probably should have done those in the reverse order. But this is an interesting story. It's my drum roll. Should we save the story for last or? Story while I'm drinking and you okay. need something to say. I don't know why I need something to say. Okay, this is Old Farm Pennsylvania Rye, six months old. Okay. All right, this is, okay. This is a gift from Garrett Rain, a, wait, 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 wait. No, he's a patron saint now. 
Garrett Ray, you patron saint of whiskey. Gotta make sure to do these early on in the episodes. <laughs> we just, hold on. We need like a bunch of patron saints back to back on Rare Whiskey Friday. And by the last one, you're just stumbling around there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Um, woo! Pine green fresh. But you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting? Hmm. I'm getting. After a rain, super petrichor, a puddle of water sitting in like a really like earthy, grassy, um, just, a, just a puddle in yeah. the dirt. Yeah. Yeah, and then with all the really bright pine herbal notes. Like it's a puddle in a pine forest. Okay. Oh, whoa! What was the halfway, take a sip, halfway through the finish, that thing takes a hard right into something. What is that? It's medicinal esque. Ooh, you know what I got? Hmm. I got like a. Eventually, I get like uh, the leavings of a of a mint olympus cop mint olympus cop drop cough drop cough drop yeah the leavings of a cough drop mm -hmm. the aftertaste of a cough drop it, it gets is there totally medicinal. In the days when whiskey was a necessity, every farm had its own working still, but the whiskey made at hand. I'm gonna shorten this, I'll tell you the story, you ready? No, this, so they're just being family legend, region. No, this is real, reputation. this is actually an interesting story. Yeah. So the the um, uh, Oberholzer family yes. uh, shows up in America, 1800s, immigrants, farmers then start farm distilling. Mm. They start taking distilling very seriously. Over the years, upgrade their still size mm -hmm. and eventually become one of the largest commercial distilleries under the name Overholt. Okay. Right. Did you hear that word? Overholt, yeah. Overholt. Old Overholt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he eventually sold, it went through partners and it eventually ends up in Kentucky where Overholt is made today, Old Overholt, mm -hmm. right? So it's now, the Old Overholt is not a Pennsylvania rye, it's a Kentucky rye that's mostly corn, I mean, dominant corn of after the rye dominant grain. Right. And it's, you know, uh, Old Overholt classic now Kentucky rye, right. right? Now, the family of the Oberholzers, the original family, yeah. who now no longer owns the Overholt name because yeah. it's owned and made in Kentucky, wanted to have some kind of brand that let them hold on to that early heritage of it was their family members that started making this stuff. Sure. So they went through the process to brand Old Farm. Okay. Connected to the Oberholzer family, the original original Overholt distillers. Yeah. Then they contracted with Hidden Stills, yes. a distillery, to try to recreate something closer oh, an to old the original. School. Yeah. Okay. Now we don't know whether it's close. I mean, you know what? <laughs> this tastes like an old timey palate. <laughs> her, her, and her. Yeah. Uh, no, it really does. There's like so much earthiness in here. And you know what flavor really starts taking, um, the, you know, the, the center stage? Wicker. No. I get what you mean. Yeah. For me, it's a cinnamon note right yeah. on the front end. Okay. A cinnamon note really starts showing up. Cinnamon dusted wicker. Yeah. <laughs> With petrichor in the air. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Interesting story, but let's move on. We're now shifting to bourbon. Yeah, and that cinnamon just builds the more you go back to it. Um, we're gonna do Glacier 45, because I wanna save one of these for last. Glacier 45, for the life of me, I searched, 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 could find absolutely nothing about this bottle. I even roamed to their About Us Facebook page okay. and couldn't figure out what's in this whiskey. It's a bourbon. That's what I know. Okay. It's coming from Oregon. That's what I know. It was, according to their About Us page, conceived during a snowstorm in Montana. That's all I know. So, here's what we should have done. Mm. This was such a lively whiskey. I put my nose in here, I don't smell anything. Yeah, I smell old wood and oil. Look at this, right. distilled from grain, aged at least six months. Yeah. And I, what I don't understand is why would you call it distilled from grain if it's also a bourbon whiskey? Is, are they just adding extra information? Did on I see a 58% ABV on that? 
Yes, you did. It does not smell like it. It smells invisible. It does. Well, maybe this was just so lively and young and, and, and yeah. I don't understand why they've put distilled from grain when it's a bourbon. If it's a bourbon, of course it's distilled from grain. We're gonna get more distance from this thing. See if we can. There we go. That's better. Now I'm getting some of the more candied sweet bourbon notes. Yeah, I'm getting a a thin a thin vanilla. Yeah. How is this? I'm getting candy? almost a milk chocolate note too. I am like breathing. A candied. I'm breathing in way too aggressively to get that little of a nose. Oh, taste it. Oh, that's good. Son of a bitch. I like that. It's got way more drama in the palate than the nose. The nose is almost invisible. The palate's kind of rare. I gotta tell you, I'm not on board. You don't like it? <clears throat> what do you, do you like, like about it? To me, it, and again, I'm trying to get more distance from this old farm. But right now, this is presenting as like a crushed up sweet tart Smarties candy whiskey, just a sugary, Basic, oh, it's sweet. Simple sweetness. It's very sweet, but I'm also getting a lot of other things in there, probably because of the alcohol. I'll bet if I dropped the proof down, I'll flatten everything out into just that sweetness. I'm just getting a basic, simple sweetness, man. By the way, that's also from William Shepard. Thank you, William Shepard. I'll still a magnificent bastard, but we already did you this episode, so. Did we spell his name right? Because somebody recently... No, no, I know. It was, that was Dillman. Dill no, it wasn't Dillman. It was Dillman. <laughs> but no. you called him Dillman. Oh, no, no, it was no, Richard. Richard. Suit Joe. That was fancy. Yeah, man. yeah, that was 100% percent What tell Fancy Dan? No! I mean, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> fancy Dan has, has got on record that he will be... Self-flagellating. Self -flagellating. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Will there be video evidence? Well, I mean, it's YouTube. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm not digging this one. I just get really basic, simple candy sweetness and not much else. I'm gonna change that for you real quick. All right. Add a little water. Do it. And it helps. And then we're gonna move on to the final bourbon, which I'm actually- Jeremy Dan, do it! <laughs> he hates that, by the way. Uh, of course he does, <laughs> Alex. he's a normal human being. Alex and I will be sitting in the uh, studio. Of course I'm... it's you and Alex. <laughs> we'll just yell randomly, do it! Uh. <laughs> he hates it. I hate, I, I'm on board with Fancy Dan. No, I'm not saying it's good. Yeah. But the reaction, that's what's good. Uh. Oh, you got some cinnamon now. See? Yeah. Water helped. Yeah, I mean, I respect the high proof releases, but I think this one probably could have been dialed back a little bit to unlock some of these flavors. Okay, on our- Yes, yeah, it did help, but I'm still- You're still not on board. Yeah, I'm still not a, but, uh, a fan. It's it's not bad. It's just really simple and basically sweet. I feel like we have a leak op problem here. Oh, uh, with the cork? And that's why, yeah. You see the residue? That's why the residue. <laughs> yeah, we do. Oh, you do. Look at that. Cool cork if it had stayed yeah. glued in. Dude, this thing, this is heavy. Yeah. This is like, wow. And it's so loose, I'm able to use my fingers to get the rest of the cork out. Yeah. They used actual cork, that was their mistake. Yeah, you're too authentic, y'all. Dude, I think with wine you can get away with that. With spirits, it eats corks, man. I could hug the this. The invention of synthetic cork I was. I could hug this at the window and break through the window. Yeah. That's how heavy it is. Oh yeah. yeah. The invention of synthetic cork was a boon to the distilled spirits industry and everyone should be using it, in my opinion. Okay. This is Frey Ranch. All right. This is a ranch in Nevada. Now, I don't know if you have any like default impressions of Nevada, but ranching is not one of the things I'm I would list. Such a tourist. I've only done uh, Vegas, Vegas a yeah. couple times. Yeah. But again, like, still, it's Nevada. It's desert. Yeah. Area, no, like, right? you look out the damn window and you're flying in. And yeah. And why even, do people live here? Even with the mountains, it's still desert yeah. mountain, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're in the Sierra Nevada um, watershed, which means they're just close enough to the mountain range in the Rockies yeah. that the watershed from the mountains feeds rivers that get to areas. So you get these little, like green oasis areas yeah. surrounded by desert. Mm. And their farm is in one of those spots. Mm. And they are doing completely distilling their own grain that they make on their farm. Hmm. Right? Yeah. This is old school. This is how distilling started. 
farmers make enough grain. So there's three layers of farming. There's, we have enough to eat, we're not gonna die. Yeah. Level one. Yeah. Level two, we have enough to eat and there's some extra, let's sell it. Right. Level three, we have enough to eat, we have some extra. We have so much extra, it's gonna go bad before we sell it, let's distill it. Yeah. Level three. It's the whiskey level. Is the whiskey level. It's the dream. That's what they're doing and I really love that right. idea. I'm hoping it smells and tastes what I, like I want it to. I gotta tell you. But. You're not gonna be disappointed on the nose. Oh good, okay. I, you're, you were making me nervous. Oh yeah, that's woody and rich. This is, by the way, there's like a, this is four year old, four grain, at least four year old, four grain I whiskey. Like a, like a buttery graham cracker. Ah, oh, that's, I'm glad I saved this for last. Yeah, there's that woodiness you're talking about, the buttery graham cracker woodiness. That's a really nice nose. And then uh, there's some vanilla that's creeping out too. That classic whiskey flavor, the vanilla, it's always nice when you get it. Yeah, I'm getting all the same things. That wood oil density, but with fruit and candy, yeah. but not overly sweet. Yeah. And the candy, you say? You say candy? Yeah, I'm like saying, a hard candy. I'm saying like a sweet graham cracker. Graham I could cracker. see that because you're getting bready sweet yeah. instead of candy sweet. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> it's just oily rich. Who would have predicted this? from Nevada, right? Damn, that's Colby, nice. what the hell? That's nice, that's nice. It doesn't, it's not a whiskey that's gonna switch it up and evolve and unfold into like new and different things moment to moment. It's, it's a nice flavor set that just stays with you and oh. slowly fades off into the sunset. That is, it, that is, and if then, somebody poured me this and said, I'm pouring you a luxury bourbon, yeah. yeah. I would buy it. There's uh, there's like um, like a like a sweetened tea note on the finish. Mm -hmm. Just the last trailing bit, with almost a little bit of a mint at the end, like it lifts. Yeah. See, this, as it lingers, it kind of lifts at the last second. This is the kind of shit I'm talking about, man. Where? Why can we not send people and go, hey, buy everything Colby made, guys? Yeah, well, for, first of all, this is a non-profit channel, so we can't tell you to no, buy anything. No, we can't. Anything. We literally, legally, we cannot. But whenever you hear us talking and trying our best to describe whiskeys with accessible notes, uh, then the things Damn. that sound interesting to you, for you to be able to get that on the website directly uh. from the maker, that is... Like, isn't that what America's supposed to be about? Small business and commerce. It's the and back capital, the backbone. It's the backbone. Of the, yeah, yeah, it's the backbone. Except for laws. Yeah, it's the backbone. Except, every, except for everything we actually do. <laughs> Small business is the backbone of America. It's like, yeah. Well, what does that translate into what you're doing and voting on, lawmakers? Not that I have a strong opinion. Jeez. It's just yeah. freedom and. So many backbones being tossed around. Yeah. Did you ever see that? Uh, really what's mostly happening to us involves the backside. Yeah. <laughs> Not the backbone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Small business creators and makers are the ass end of America. Yeah. <laughs> the ass end of America. That's so what do we do with their actual laws? We shit on them. That's right. Not that I have a strong. Or story. we shove it up their ass. <laughs> shove it up their ass. <laughs> so yeah, all these large corporations that are funding my campaign will make sure that they're taken care of. Yeah. But everybody that's actually employing the vast majority of the country by the numbers, well, you didn't fund my campaign. So, so eat all of the dicks. Yeah. Not that I have a strong opinion. Did you notice? I don't really have a strong opinion. No, you're opinion. subtle and nuanced. I don't really have yeah. a strong opinion about yeah. this. <laughs> Rather than go on, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, but you steal your liver, sorry. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.